take first question over here in the fourth row. Hey, Steve. Hi, Logan. Um, Logan Murdoch, NBC Sports Bay Area. So what is the latest on Clay and Kevin Durant? So Clay uh, will plan on playing tomorrow. Uh, so we expect him to play, barring something unforeseen. Uh, he's continued to improve. And um, so that's good news. Kevin will not play tomorrow. Um, he will continue to uh, to get treatment and, and uh, get on the court and continue to work. Um, but will be unavailable for game four. What, what didn't you see from Kevin that you needed to see? Uh, for it's him not, it's not really about that. It's just about um, about when the training staff tells me he's ready, and he, you know he's been doing individual work on the court. He's been in the training room and the weight room. He's been doing lots of lots of different things. Um, training staff said he's he's not ready to play in a game yet. So that's that's all. Again, here in the aisle. Anthony Sutter with the Athletic. You talked yesterday about potentially getting him in a scrimmage today. Um, are you going to be able to do that? Yeah, it's not going to happen today. Uh, I think uh, that's something that will happen in the coming days, but not today. Steve, Tim Reynolds with the AP. They've obviously done a very good job in finding Danny Green, and he's done a good job finding spots. Is it as simple as that, or are there things that you're missing with him when when he gets on some of these roles that, he, that, that he's been known to get on? Uh, our defense was poor last night, and in particular, um, several times leaving uh, Danny when we didn't need to. And uh, he's a he's a shooter who commands uh, attention and respect. And and uh, there were at least three of his shots where we just um, drifted away from him, and we've got to stay connected to him. Steve Jeff Ferrado, Barry News Group. Um, last night, again, Draymond sort of shouldered some of the blame for what happened. Uh, he does this a lot. Um, can you talk about what effect that has on his teammates when he's willing to uh, take the heat after a, a game where the team maybe didn't play real well? Well, there's no no need for him to to take the heat on a loss. We, we lost the game as a team, and Draymond played hard. All our guys played hard. I thought um, uh, they, they competed their, their butts off. Uh, but we didn't play well enough to win. Um, but, you know, I think all of our guys are always uh, holding themselves accountable, and that's a that's an admirable trait, and it's a necessary one because it's the only way you can uh, uh, take a look at what you need to, to get better with and improve upon. It seems like he does it maybe more than some guys. Do you think it helps fuel himself? Does it help him play better the next next time out? Yeah, yeah, I think I do. I think yeah, it's part of who he is. He, he likes to motivate himself. And so if he doesn't play well, he, he beats himself up a little bit and he sort of opens up about it uh, to the media. And, and then he comes out and he plays better the next game. John, fourth row on the right. Coach, uh, John Schumann, NBA.com. Statistically, that was your worst defensive game since I think the Clippers series. Is that match what your eyes saw? And then Part two, do you feel like it was more personnel-based and missing Clay, missing Looney, or do you feel it was just the guys that were there just making too many mistakes? Uh, it's a combination of all that. I mean, when you change uh, uh, the, the lineups and you, you're without some key guys, now you're ending up with five guys on the floor who generally haven't played together a whole lot. And uh, so I, I think that uh, the, while the effort was there, the execution was not um, – and uh, we, we watched tape this morning. We saw all kinds of stuff that we did poorly that we have to clean up. And um, so it's just, uh, you know, it's something we have to adapt to. And I think we'll be much better tomorrow and we'll be more comfortable with, um, you know, with the personnel groupings and, and strategically what we need to do. Mark in the front. Steve Mark, Medina Barry, and his group. To clarify on Claire, are there any minute restrictions in the game four? No. With Kevon Luna, I know you're saying that he was going to be out for the finals, but there's a report that came out today that maybe there's an outside chance. Has anything changed in that regard? Uh, we're gathering information, um, second opinion type thing. And um, so it's sort of um, open. It's an open question. And uh, as we gather information, we'll, we'll know more. But um, at this point, there's not really anything to report. Um, but we're, we are looking at all of our options and his options. Phil on the left. Hey, Steve. Phil Barber, Santa Rosa Press Democrat, right along the wall to your left. 
Um, I don't know if you saw the video of what happened with Kyle Lowry and the fan courtside during the game, but I'm wondering, does it disturb you? We've talked a lot about these incidents around the league, but does it disturb you that it happened at Oracle? And does it make it worse that the person involved uh, apparently is a member of the organization? Uh, I have not seen the play. Um, I, I, I didn't see it last night. I saw the commotion afterwards, um, but I haven't seen a replay. And I didn't really even know uh, the story until this morning. I know our organization has put out a release, and I will let the release speak for itself. It's really not, uh, um, you know, my uh, jurisdiction, but. Um, you know, I will also personally apologize to, to Kyle and, and to the Raptors. That's uh, unacceptable. Scott, here in the front. Scott Osler of the Chronicle. Uh, Steve, uh, with Steph, is it possible for him to play 48 minutes? Are you ever tempted to even stretch it out even more than you did last night? Uh, not really. Uh, um, you know, last night is about the extent uh, of, of what I think uh, Steph is capable of. He was brilliant. Um, he was amazing. Um, but I think he was, you know, I took him out with about two minutes left and he got about two and a half minutes rest in the, in the second quarter. Um, we're asking an awful lot of him and um, we should be able to, to uh, buy a few minutes rest here and there for him. Joe on the right. Steve, Joe Varden, The Athletic. I've uh, got a small picture and big picture question with Durant. Um, did he have a setback from yesterday to today? And then bigger picture, I mean, there's up to four games and a week and a half left right. in the series. Right. Is there a question that he may not play at all? Well, no, there was no set, setback. Um, so, you know, I was hoping that uh, today would be the day when he could get out on the floor. Uh, it, it's not going to be today. It's going to be probably tomorrow, uh, the following day, the next couple of days. Um, so the hope would be that he can still make it back um, you know, at the end of the series. Um, but he did not have a setback. It's, um, you know, I'm getting asked a million questions every day. And, and so sometimes I might answer something that doesn't jibe perfectly with, you know, what the training staff saw that morning. So I, I probably misspoke last night. Um, I thought today was the day, his day to get out on the floor. But he still has another, uh, another hurdle to clear before he can do that. And so that's the next step. Michael, back left. Steve, uh, <clears throat> Michael Grange from Sportsnet. Uh, I mean, through this run, you guys have had your share of uh, tough situations down down against Houston, OKC, and it's probably one or two I'm, uh, I'm forgetting. But does does this feel like the pressure's mounting a little bit down two one, and uh, you know, lineup uh, seeming to change every minute? Um, it just feels like um, business as usual. Honestly, um, I hope that doesn't sound. Arrogant, but the the benefit of having been through five years of this is we have literally seen everything. Um, you know, we've we've lost a three one lead uh, in heartbreaking fashion. Um, we've um, come back from three one down. We've had to win a game seven on the road. Um, we've been without Steph Curry for series. We've been without Kevin Durant. Um, we were without Clay last night. Our opponents have been without key players. Um, so you can name it, and we've seen it. And so I, I think the, um, the, the the key is, and our guys know this because they've been through it before, uh, you just zero in on the next game. You make your adjustments, um, and you win the next game, and all of a sudden everything shifts and um, that you know the whole narrative changes, and so it's it's you just can't get caught up in all the uh, the hoopla. It's just focus on winning the game and doing what you have to do to do so. Steve, last question in the back. Uh, Steve Simmons, Toronto Sun, back here. Um, in each of the last three rounds, there have been what I guess I'd call Kawhi signature games, kind of like a Steph game of last night. Uh, he hasn't had one of those yet in this series. How much of a concern is it that you're trailing and he hasn't had, you know, what you're going to expect him to do somewhere along the way? Um, it's, it's not a, uh, it's not a thought that goes through my head. You know, that's, um, that's, that's for your stories. Um, a lot of different angles to take. Um, we're trying to do the best we can on 
Kawhi on their team. We have to make a lot of improvements defensively. It was a very poor effort. Um, the guy did have 30 points. I think he had like 23 in the second half. So if that's not a signature game, then um, I guess he's just still pretty good. Uh, but no, that's that's all part of it. Guys have good games. You know, they have great games. They have poor games. You just try to you just try to win whatever you have to do, and then um, you know there's there's uh, all kinds of coverage beyond that that is beyond our control, and um, we just move forward. Thank you, Coach. Thanks.